it's our last year hey guys me and jade is in the car at junior practice um i'm gonna talk about a topic that i haven't really thought a lot about it kind of hit me on the way here so i decided all right let's just talk about it so um what's up all right it's funny because i haven't went live in a long long time this i don't know whatever what's poppy y'all paris uh paris please stay tuned because i would like um for you to to, to you know share the screen i don't know what you young people call it but where you come on and join join the, the podcast um i also will open it up to any somebody else who wants to chime in like you know no problem all right so uh, I'm going to give a quick recap so that you kind of know. Uh, first, I want to give a shout out to my daughter, Jada, who made honor roll. Um, she got a 3.5, between 3.5 and 3.9. So she'll be honored. So that's very exciting. I'm proud of her for that. Having a daughter who's smart and have good, get, and is not a troublemaker and gets good grades is a win. So, boo. All right. So if you know me, you know Kat is, um, you know... Always on here talking. Paris said, cool. Congratulations. Good job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, talking and Thank sharing you. and very open about my life, right? Very, very, uh, let me take my jacket out. I'm going to get out of here. Very open about my life. And um, in the last two years, you know, if you've known me, I've kind of almost declined. Um, on Facebook, if you watch Facebook, oh, somebody said, awesome. Okay, you're getting all the love. Um, on Facebook, I, I, I saw, so maybe started in 2015, 16, 17 i was on facebook and instagram just talking and giving words and doing bible studies and mentoring and being people's life coach i started a couple businesses you know i lost over 100 pounds life was popping Aha. okay um i mean i life was good it I wasn't exactly where i wanted to be there was a lot of stuff i wanted but for the most part life was pretty good and then come 2018, you know, my husband and I decided, like, let's try to start having a baby. Um, you know, I have these videos on YouTube of what happened, but long story short, I got pregnant and tragically lost my baby. Um, it was a life or death. Like, literally was at home bleeding out, and I had to be rushed to the hospital and had to go into immediate surgery. So, lost the baby. And then we're like, okay, we're going to trust and believe God, and we're going to go back in and, uh, you know try again because this happens you know it was really it hit me hard i was hurt but i was still that you know that catherine you know that cat and then 2019 came and we got pregnant again and it was like woohoo yay you know whatever and lost the second baby on my birthday the first time i lost the baby i lost the baby on february 19th that was me and lance's 10 year anniversary wedding anniversary and then this recent baby that i lost was uh january 20th 2019 that was my birthday last year um it's something called a blighted ovum it's where either the baby's heart stops or it didn't develop right but either way there was no heartbeat so i was just so that i had i had announced on instagram people knew you know we were starting to do videos and stuff because i have a big online family my heart was crushed i'm like wait a minute god like I'm out here doing the work of the Lord, you know, via social media. Um, you know, I'm opening my home, my gifts, my family, you know, just really out here, like working for the Lord or whatever. And you let this happen. You took both my babies. You could have saved my babies. I mean, it completely broke me. And I spent most of last year depressed. I spent a big chunk of last year not really being the same Catherine. And I remember saying like, God, you got to fix me. I'm not going to fake come back from this. I'm not going to, you know, I wasn't going to church. If you, if you know me, you, you, you didn't see us at church a lot. Um, because it wasn't just me. My husband was heartbroken. My kids were heartbroken. Um, even my best friend, you know, we, we went and had, um, you know, meeting today, getting some business stuff together and her heart was broken. You know, it, it affected her and her decisions in her household. And I was like, Oh my gosh. And so I was broke. I was depressed. I was mad. And I think more so I was so hurt because sometimes in your life, <clears throat> all the time in your life, let's just be real, you have this plan of how stuff will go, especially if you're a hard worker, especially if you know, okay, it ain't going to come easy. I got to make some sacrifices. I got to take some leaps of faith. I got to work hard some nights. There's something to have to go without. You know, you've kind of calculated in your mind, if I do this, then this should happen, right? And 
Some people do that with a job and a career. I did that with my family. Okay, <laughs> this is cute. Um, Jada's like 10, you know, nine. I'm gonna go ahead and try to have this baby and then I'm gonna be done. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna put it on YouTube and da la 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 la. Boom, baby gone. Okay, cool, that happens. Okay, that happens. All right, Lord. <laughs> you didn't hear me when I said uh, I pray for A, B, and C. Boom, baby gone. And it hit me because it was very hard not to attach how God supposedly loved me with what the hell was happening in my life. Pause right there. Let me speak to somebody. Um, if you are in a place where you are questioning God's lack of communication with you, God's nose to some of your blessed, your, your prayers you're praying for, if you are upset at God, mad at God, bitter, angry, disappointed in him, good job. Great. You know why? Because I believe God allows those things because we have this warped sense of who he is. Like, okay, God is like this guy in the sky who he around us and the Bible says I should love him. And I love him, but I don't really like know him, but I love him because I don't want to be known as a bad Christian. And it's, fa it's by faith that we save and I love him by faith. And sometimes he don't, you know, you go through this thing trying to piece together this Lego, you know, I say Lego because I have kids, but this image in mind of kind of like who God, God is, right? But then something happens hard like you lose two babies and boom the legos fall apart and when i tell you i was mad God, i remember i was up one more drinking a mimosa and i felt like the holy spirit was just like you know i miss talking to you okay i was like eh, okay you don't miss talking to me because you miss talking to me like fell apart nobody's at the house side note if you ever feel like you're questioning if god is real let me help you. If you're ever, if you're questioning if God is real, but you're also mad at him, baby, you know he real. Because who the hell you mad at, okay? If he ain't real, child, you can't be. I ain't never got mad at Buddha. I ain't never been pissed off at Santa Claus because I know they're not real. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Come on, logic. This is what happens when you're too smart. When you're too damn smart for your own good. So I wanted to not believe. I wanted to question his, his reality. This Jesus God died for me. Lord, I'm mad at you. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, that's a tip. If you're mad at him, you have any... It's like people say, oh, I don't believe in God, but they say, well, why does God allow the babies to die? Now, wait a minute, atheist, pick, baby, agnostic. Do, do, is he real? And we mad at him for bad stuff and happy for good stuff? Or we just don't think... We don't. We ain't talking about him at all because he's not real. So anyway, I ain't never been mad at Santa Claus. Push play. So, um, after a year, you know, okay... I'm coming out of it. I'm going to therapy. Baby, I was in regular therapy. Uh, therapy with Leilani, because that's my best friend. We do that. Baby, I was in group therapy. I was sitting at group therapy having an anxiety attack, and I just feel like they ain't understand. And let me tell you, it's people in therapy for far less crazy stuff than I am, okay? Uh, I'm talking about, like, girl, like, one lady was up in there, child, I ain't going to tell you her business, but I was just like, this is what you up in here for? Anyway, so I learned a couple tricks in therapy, you know, how to identify the proper emotions. Sometimes you say you're mad, but you're not mad. Your ass is hurt or you're scared or you're frustrated and tired. Like, and we don't want to label emotions properly. So anyway, did all of that. Sorry, Jay. Yeah. And I kind of felt like I was coming out, coming out of it. Stay with me. I'm going to talk about it. So I'm driving today and, and, and I've come, I wanted to share something with you, but I really can't right now. Me and Lance are trying to plan like this new business thing on the side. So as we get it together, I'll share with you, but I'm at a crossroad right now of how I want to operate in the next phase of my life on one hand. And let me, and maybe you're, you've been there. Maybe you've been at a crossroad. Let's, t let's take something for example. Let's say it's a relationship, right? On one hand, you know, maybe you feel like, Hey, I want to give it a try. I want to, I want to do this. I want to do that. On the other hand, like I want to go, let's say it's a job on one hand. Like maybe I should stick it, stick in it, work harder and you know, get the promotion. On the other hand, you like, you know, damn well, you don't even like this job. Why is we playing? Stop ignoring your feelings. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, Oh, I don't know if you've ever been there. Let me direct your attention to the fact that it is a choice. There are a lot of people living right now as if they don't have a choice. You're being um, driven and stared by your emotions or by logic that don't make no damn sense. Understand that every move you make, even if it fails you, needs to be a conscious decision and choice because even the failure, if you believe in Christ, um, will work out for your good. So I'm at a place right now where I'm like, okay, hmm, I got a choice. Am I going to be mad at God for what he, you know, ain't give me and do for me? Because don't get me wrong, I still feel some type of way. Deep down, deep, deep down inside. It's going to take time. On the other hand, uh-oh. Hold on, y'all. On the other hand, I know better. I, I, I know better. There are, there are, when I was in therapy, my therapist looked at me and said, 
Mrs. Branchman, can I call you Kay? I was like, yeah, girl. Mm-hmm. White lady. White, white, white lady. But uh, I like her. You better come through with the word. Girl, I'm coming. Just walk with me. I'm going to bless you, okay? She said, I hear that you're mad at God. She was not a Christian therapist, okay? I, I need somebody to give it to me straight. She said, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah. What's up? She said, what do you think it was that sustained you through your hard times? And at that moment, I feel like Jesus was in the corner like, <laughs> She asked you a question. And I was like, I'm very animated. Like, how I'm talking is how I experience life. So I could feel the Holy Spirit laughing in the corner. Like, yeah, what sustains you through your hard time? <laughs> and I'm like, damn. So I professed it because I am a, when I say I'm a woman, woman, I'm a woman, babe. I stand before you and say I was dead wrong. I was like, you know what, real talk. Although, my, she's not a Christian therapist. I said, although I'm mad, real talk, ma'am, it was my faith. I always have a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of him. Child, he be all around, but I be trying to keep up. Okay. And although I was mad and frustrated and disappointed and I felt abandoned, there were some principles that were sewn down. Oh, come on, Holy Spirit, into the core of who I am that operated when my ass didn't want to do it out of like with sheer, sheer willpower. Okay. You might ask, okay, can you mad? Like what? The faith to get up and go on another day. Like, I'm doing bad in this area, but I, I know I could be a good wife. I know I could be a good mother. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's been a good story. That's a principle. You know what I'm saying? I'm asking God to bless me with more. Can I take care of what I have? I didn't say I'm depressed. I'm laying in the bed. I did some days, but there was always something that got me up. Being transparent and not forsaking the fellowship by not calling Leilani, by not saying, you know, hey, Paris, you want to come get something to eat? When I know I wanted to be alone, but I didn't need to be alone. Like, there were things at work in me that had nothing to do with me being smart and all wise and all powerful, but basic principles that have been sewn into who I was, the fabric of who I was, and watered. So stay with me, right? So I said this, is, so, it, so all this stuff is, is coming to a head where it's like, all right, I'm mad, but... So, something is bigger than the pain I feel and the pain was real okay so I know I had crazy people hitting me up like girl you know I like I know you lost your babies I, I kind of feel like if anybody ever is going through something and you decide not because God told you to but you want to just call and check on them here's a great tip one of the best things about my best friend is she sat in my pain and my misery and my sorrow with me sometimes with no answer with no scripture and sometimes she cried with me that is a powerful thing to just sit in the mess with somebody. Sometimes we don't need a word from you, okay? This gonna sound prideful, but it's not. I'm speaking about my spiritual gifts. I don't need a word from somebody sometimes. I'm very potent, clearly, and I can hear from God. So if I'm mad at him, I don't need you to come get, give me a word. I mean, I used to sit like this when people were trying to give me a scripture. Because sometimes the damn scripture was out of context. Like, that ain't what that means what she said yeah keep reading there's another part to that that's that's out of context you know what i'm saying what i needed was for somebody to sit in the mess with me and let me fall apart in front of you and you say it's gonna be okay because even if you were telling me something deep that would cut you know cut my heart i wasn't in a in a place where it was falling on good soil so anyway today i'm driving and um i'm driving i got four kids in the car i got my kids and then I'm uh, my niece and nephew. I'm taking them to basketball practice. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, you have gone through the process of sanctification. And immediately I'm holding back tears. And I'm like, first of all, God, I was not even talking to you. I'm listening to John Legend. JJ just got put on the John Legend. I'm singing. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, you know, oh, let's get lifted. You know, singing the old John Legend. And the Holy Spirit dropped them on me. Woof. And, I, and what came back was like all them times I was begging and crying, like, why you do this to me? Why you let this happen? You're the God of the universe. You could touch my baby uh, hit heart and start it back up. Like, what's popping? All knowing God of the universe, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what's popping? You know? And I immediately, once I got to practice, I looked up sanctification. I looked at some scriptures and I just sat and I meditated because I'm like, sometimes, okay, y'all ready for the word? <clears throat> Let me just speak in I statements. I oftentimes ask for stuff 10, 20, sometimes 30 years in the future. I have an eye for and a mind for just whew, in the future. There are times where I've gotten a glimpse of who I'm going to be in my 80s and 90s. I've seen my great grandchildren, my grandchildren, her in her 50s, sitting around, even, even 60s, because she's only 20 years younger than me sitting around me gleaning from the matriarch of the family which is me 
I pray for stuff. I, I remember from being young and praying for more wisdom. I've always been very wise to be so young, right? And oftentimes we pray and ask God for stuff. And this goes back, go back and watch the live because I'm bringing it all back together. We pray for stuff with this beautifully put together blueprint. Okay, God, <laughs> I got it all figured out. So this is what my passion and purpose is like this year. You know what I'm saying? And so what you can do is you can use this person to teach me a little lesson. You can bless me with this amount of money. You can take this person out of my life because they're toxic. <laughs> like we just put it all together. And then we say, okay, Lord, do your thing. Bless it. Bless my plan. And God is like, Ugh, okay. What I did here is you want to be used. And I got you. Because inevitably this life is about being conformed to the image of Christ. Right? The image of Christ is just not about all the, you know, amazing things he was able to do. But there is a sanctification process that happened with Christ. Okay. Justification, sanctification through justification, which started with the cross. Let me break it down for you. I ain't going to be for you too much longer. What I'm saying to you is this. We're justified through the act of Christ on the cross. Meaning our sins are forgiven and the slate is wiped, wiped clean. Okay. Of punishment we deserve because of the cross. But after the cross, there is a process where we become more Christ-like. And when we ask for things like, God, give me my purpose. God, allow me to be a good wife. God, send me my, send me my wife. Send me my husband. Send me my business. Um, give me wisdom. God, take these toxic people out of my life. God is like, okay, cool, but I never just do, I'm just never working on one thing, on one person, in one part of your life. I'm everywhere. Think of time like this. Think I don't have a stick. Think of time in our sense like this, like this lanyard. Time is linear, okay? Jada, do me a favor. Hold this cup. Hold it right here. Hold it right here. Okay. That's God. This is time. This, the time-space continuum is something that is fixed. Okay. It's not infinite for us. We got a certain amount of time. God is this cup. I mean, he's bigger, but I just want you to see the difference. So as he's working, move the cup up and down this time frame, Jada, like this. You see this? Move it back. That's what God is doing. In all places, in all time, in all things. Thank you, baby. So if that is true, that means what you're praying for today has to match up with who he's called you to be at the end of your life. It also has to match up with all the people who you're going to encounter on that time-space continuum. Come on, stay with me, right? So if I'm sitting in 2012, oh, Lord, make me wise. Give me all my dreams. Bless everybody around me, God. I want to just be, I want to just be, I want to just be. Then God is not sitting in that in 2012 saying, how can I do it? God is also in 2080 saying, whew, we did it. And, 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 and it worked out. And even in between there, there are things that have to happen in order to sanctify you. Now, let me say this. If you've ever been anybody who's been hurt or lost anything, uh, you know, mama, mama got cancer and died, but the heathen aunt still alive, stuff like that. Those are the things that I'm being honest with you. I don't know your life is not your own. Absolutely. You, you may not get an answer. You may not get an answer. I'm just being upfront with you because I'm still on, on hold with the Lord. I done moved on, but my, I put it on speakerphone because I'm waiting for him to give me an answer for this. In the meantime, I'm going to go on to the store. I'm going to continue to operate in life, right? And like you said, your life is not your own. It's also not what I'm doing now, going through the, 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 the story, the beauty, the plot of sanctification somehow affects her children, Lance's children, her her husband she's going to meet, the business she's going to start or take over, or whatever book she's going to write. Like, it, it's woven. Think of your life as a tapestry. My guy, my girl, you a thread. So I'm telling you all this to say that if I can come out of two miscarriages, and I'm going to say this and hear my heart, because if you know me, then you know I'm not on no other stuff. I go to church. You know, I do cuss. Let me put that out there because you ain't got to remind me. But for the most part, I'm an amazing mother. I'm a loving wife, supportive wife, okay? Um, you, okay, the church said amen. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a forgiving daughter because my mama don't always get it right. I'm a supportive friend. I'm pretty much honest for the most part. Um, I did get two cookies free and I was happy. And then I dropped the kids off and I went back and paid for them and told the kids. Like, I was like, I don't want to, you know, risk no blessing off no cookies. In my opinion, I'm going to just be honest. I'm a wretch and I needed Christ. However, I thought I was a great candidate for the Lord to, to bless me with two children. And it, and it wasn't so. I learned a hard lesson in the sovereignty of God. And that is something I believe in our churches. People ain't ready to hear. Because at first I was blaming pastors for not teaching it enough. Until I looked at who they was preaching to. A lot of y'all ain't ready to hear about the sovereignty of God. What it means to be sovereign. What it, what, oh, Lord. That ain't nothing but the devil. Mm. 
what it means for God to make a decision. I once read The Sovereignty of God. It's a book. Ooh, it's called The Sovereignty of God. The Sovereignty of God is you in heaven looking down at your mother burning in hell and you saying, God, you are holy. That's heavy because, of course, we all love our moms, right? But it, it, it not saying that that's true, but it's saying something that goes so much against who you are as a person, as a daughter, as a mother, as a human, as a wife, as a whatever, to, to say that God's decision is, 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 is above what I think should be and you are holy. That's powerful. I read that book like four years ago. And now it's being played out like the sovereignty of God is something that is hard to swallow. It's something you can't explain and, and it makes you look crazy to people on the outside. Because most people who didn't walk with him, maybe in the capacity that I've walked with him, because I've been walking with him since I was little, little, like little, little. I, I was the weirdo on campus, okay? Um, they would have fallen off or they would have walked away. Like, oh, this surely this there's this is not the god i want to serve that would allow this to happen so as i bring it back around what i'm sharing with you is my journey in sanctification sanctification is being set apart keep reading read being set apart for the use of yahweh for the use of god so that goes back to your purpose oh god uh, my purpose and being a, a husband a wife a mom a business owner a, a, a friend being i want to start a nonprofit. like all of that is purpose and passion right that's in here right if you believe he created you who put the purpose the purpose and passion there he did which means that there's a sanctification process that has to happen that that those dreams may play out with a person that can you know be a good store over that I make plans, God laughs. So now trying to only want what he wants. And that's hard to want what he wants. It's hard because you don't even know what he wants. Because I'd be like, you don't know what you want. Like, you know, it, it, and, and let me tell you, like I hear people say like, you know, Paris said today when we were on the live, she said, if I was just about my father's business, you know, I, would, I don't need distractions. But can I be honest with you? Sometimes I don't want to be about my father's business. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to start a Bible study called um, Christian Rehab. This is for people who are true believers. I'm not trying to, I, I've never been called, I'm not, I'm not an evangelist. I, I ain't for the non-saved. I done been done cut somebody out, okay? I'm not good with apologetics. I like working with believers because there's a gift I have with challenging your ideologies about yourself and who God is. And, I, and, and, I, and I, sometimes I don't want to be about his business because his business don't feel good. His, his business don't feel like it serves me and my flesh. Can we be real sometime? And I'm talking about people, I'm talking about one of my homegirls on here, uh, uh, Joanne got four kids. Your, her life is about serving. Imagine God saying no or not right now to a blessing and it sound like no. It's not right now, but we don't know sometimes, okay? God be trying to bless you on the back end. You be like, I prayed for this two years ago, Lord, you okay? You know? But she's, she's in a life serving as a wife, as a mother. So it, it, you, it hits different when you feel like, oh, I'm, I feel like I'm giving so much, God, and you ain't really coming through you know what i'm saying so i just want to encourage anybody watching um my journey with losing two children i believe was a big step for me for my gifts to go deeper I, my gifts are very potent you know how i know because i don't want to be around no damn body my gifts too potent I, I i would love to go to kobe's memorial if they have one i can't be around all them people it's that's too much for my spirit too much for my spirit i know i know I've, i'm being sanctified because the deeper and more spiritual I get, the more ratchet my mouth is becoming, which means I got to get ready and start fasting. I be cussing like I grew up in the jungles, Imperial Court. Those are projects out here. I cuss like I ain't got no... I, let me tell you something, side note. Whatever your gift is, I can tell you where the enemy going to hit you. My gift is speaking. I, I, right now, there is 12 people watching. I guarantee you feeling chills right now. I guarantee you I'm talking about something that you're dealing with. That's my, that's my gift. The enemy don't have to hit me, you know, with, um, you know other stuff people maybe somebody might be struggling with lusting and i mean I, I think lance is the most finest man on earth i had a few celebrity cr crushes i met him i was like i'm good i think my husband is the most finest man on earth the enemy ain't gonna cover me with no man he gonna make somebody cut me off so i can cuss like i ain't got no damn sense and now my blood pressure up my head hurt okay my mouth the thing i use to honor god and worship god and, and use my give is where i get hit at you feel what i'm saying look yeah can i get some amens yeah 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 so i know i need to fast okay um i'm sharing this with you so that as you're watching this and understanding man i'm going through some hard times you possibly are going through coming out of or going into baby because this was a two two year thing the uh the 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 um what metamorphosis of sanctification Okay, being set apart 
And let me tell you, set apart don't mean just set apart from other people. Sometimes it's set apart from the sin that you've woven into who, who you think you are, the story you've told about, oh, that's just who I am. Oh, really? The Holy Spirit says, let me sanctify you. I didn't set you apart from the story you done, you, or the story that's been told about you. My mom has a story about me where they told her it was a cyst. The cyst was growing. And sometimes cysts can grow to the size where it's like a baby and they had to operate. And she was pregnant. So when she meets people, she says, oh, yeah, this is my tumor. She calls me a tumor. I had to stop her. My mom would be 71 this year. I said, ma'am, I'm not a tumor. Stop calling me that. Stop speaking that over me. Because it did something about how I saw myself, which is why I overworked myself. Because I never saw myself as equal to being loved and taken care of like I was loving and taking care of other people. So I was working for people's love. Because I saw myself as an inanimate object, as a cyst, as a cancer that really shouldn't even be here. Come on. Watch some stories you let people tell about. About you you see what I'm saying so being set apart it may be set apart from the ways of your family how they operate and act like they ain't got no damn sense you feel what I'm saying I'm about to read your comments so I just want to encourage you to let me just say this go through sanctification honestly don't go through sanctification as if um oh don't go through what time is it oh it's only seven o'clock don't go through sanctification as if you are I'm a good Christian and I don't want to be mad at God and I, God, I'm going to just worship you, God. You're a holy God. Just help me get through it, God. Because you know what God doing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because in your heart, you're cussing them out. You're waking up mad. You're crying in the shower. You're showing out at church. The loudest one yelling at you in your car about to thinking about suicide. Come on, Holy Spirit, and speak to the people. Who is you fooling? Who you putting on for? I'm starting a Bible study called Christian Rehab. Some of y'all need to sit down from y'all church. Thinking the church going to fall apart if you walk away from the ministry. Well, maybe it need to fall apart because God is everywhere working on everybody. I'm telling you, listen to your mom, listen to your auntie. I'm telling you, the, the things that we swear we hiding from God. Ooh, we just know we hiding it from him. Oh, you know, I, I, I do a little bit of this on the side of the Lord. Know my heart. The Lord know your mouth. The Lord knows your intentions. He knows the jealousy, the envy. A lot of y'all are envious. Let me help you out. Jealousy and envy is not the same thing. Stop using jealousy and envy wrong. Jealousy is when, um, let's say uh, Jada has a teacher that really loves her. Um, jealousy is when I'm jealous of the teacher because I am threatened that she's going to take this relationship from me. Envy is when I look at somebody and say, I want what they got. Come on. I'm about to read your comments. Don't go nowhere, y'all. You feel what I'm saying? Let me help you out. Some of y'all are dealing with envy and it's so deep rooted and you've been envious your whole damn life because you felt like you should have had more, more than what you have. You felt like you got a lot taken from you. But in actuality, you ain't had nobody, nobody stand up in front of your face and tell you, you ain't worked as hard as you think you done worked. Because the Lord had to tell me that, child. He, he laid me out. I said, I don't want to talk to you no more. I just knew I had worked hard. I should have been a millionaire by now, child. I was so arrogant. Anyway. So I just want to help you out. Sanctification, okay? Um, go through it with grace. With grace means that, um, you know, be honest and transparent about how you really feel, right? Yeah, some of y'all need to stop praying. Lord, just, Lord, give me, nah, nah. Some of y'all need to go in your quiet, quiet place and be like, look, I don't even have the words to tell you right now, but I feel so heavy and I feel like you're not even here and I am mad at you. I can't tell you how many times I said that over the last 24 months. I am so mad at you. And then it turned in, I'm so hurt by you. And then it turned in, I'm so scared because you didn't do this for me. What else won't you, won't, what you won't do for me? And then it turned in, but low key though, you did come through on this, this, and this. You saw, there's a progression, it's sanctification. He was setting me apart from who I had made him in my mind and my heart. So I just want to encourage y'all, like, I ain't gonna. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a very rough Christian. I'm very rough. Uh, I, 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 I'm Peter. Je Maybe I'm John. Sometimes, sometimes I'm Joe. Sometimes I'm uh, what's his name in the well? What's his name? Uh, oh man, Jonah. Okay. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm Samson. I'm everybody in the Bible. Everybody. I'm about to read your comments, y'all, because I, I can check. I'm gonna read them. I'm everybody. Because I'll, I'll be honest with you, I feel like if people knew my gift, they would ignore me because of how just, ugh, my mouth, I know. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't speak eloquently. I'm very much, where you at? I don't have time for the, move the mic, move the chairs. You in the back that's watching, watching at the water fountain. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. That's me. And so, um... But I, I, I don't let that stop me because I know somebody watching this right now, you feel the same damn way about what you're dealing with. So let your process of sanctification happen how it's going to happen. If you have children, if you have best friends, be honest about how you feel and where you are. 
I, this one has watched me, and I promise you, her watching me cry at 2 o'clock in the morning because she got to go into the bathroom, and I'm not doing this, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm mad at God, Jay. She be like, for real? You know what it's, it's going to free her up when she's sitting in her dorm room because she's going to be like, you know what? I used to see my mama go through stuff like this, and she came out of it, so I know I can trust this God that, that, my, that my mother served. That I've served, that I'm that I'm learning to get to know. All right, let me read y'all comments. I'm so sorry, y'all. I curse like a sailor, but I serve the Lord first. I ain't lying. I serve him. I and, and I'm not proud. I'm 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 low down, dirty, the worst Christian. I'm the worst one. I I when Jesus was sitting with the ratchets, the prostitutes, and the thieves, I've been right there. <laughs> Hey Lord, you know we out here. We out here. Not not because I'm proud, but because I understand the cross. Some, some ooh, I ain't gonna get into it. I ain't gonna get into it. Even after 17 years, I still think my husband fine as hell. I love the Lord and curse my ass up, and he still blesses me because I serve him. Absolutely. And I'm gonna tell you, my goal is to fast and through the the work of the Holy Spirit, my mouth gonna get better. You know, I, I believe he's gonna conform me, but. I know the Lord has given me grace and mercy because ain't no way I could have been, my mouth could have been conformed at the same time he was sanctifying me with everything that happened. Oh, no, it wouldn't have happened. Your gift, is, your gift isn't always for tailor-made for the church. It's, oh, definitely not. I'm a definitely social media ministry. But they crazy, too. I don't want to be put in that box because them, them social media people are scammers. Before I give you this word, cash app, cat brashman, child, okay. Okay, so that's everybody. So anyway, really quick, I don't never do this, but I'm open. If anybody wants to ask me a question, um, you could send a request to talk to me live. Um, or, you know, we could chat for about two or three minutes because I got to get ready and go get my son. But I'm going to just open the lines up. I guess I how they say on the radio. If you have a question like, cat, just want to say something or, you know, whatever. The lines are open. The doors of the church are open. Um Please keep a respectful child. If you don't have to go crazy, I ain't going to send a child. I'm just going to X you out, and then I'm going to block you. But, um, you know, I just want to say thank you to people who watch. I, my prayer for you is that as I go through what I go through, maybe it don't hit you as hard. I didn't have nobody doing li lives about sanctification. You know, um, I had people sending me sermons, but it was like sermons about, like, new job, new house, you lost your car. Like, nah, I lost two babies. Now what? Send me the sermon on that shit. Sorry, Lord. I know. I'm, I know. I know. I know. I didn't have to. I just. I just wanted to drive it home. But you're right. I didn't have to use the S word. Um, yeah. Nobody could send me a sermon on that. So, um, you know. I, I so let me give you this, and I'm gonna be done. Before I lost them two babies. So I lost the baby, baby one and eighteen, baby two and nineteen. In seventeen, at the end of seventeen, I put my best friend aside. I said, Leilani, I just got a heart to do an event. For women who can't conceive or who have had miscarriages or who have lost children, babies. I said, I don't know what it is. I feel it heavy on me, but I don't have no money. Um, I can't do it at my church because at the church, you still have to have some type of cover co cost so that we can pay for lights and, you know, people to come in, open the church, stuff like that. And I don't, I'm not one to ask my church, it's for God, let me do it for free. I ain't stupid. It's still, you know, um, bills that have to be paid, right? And I was like, I don't know how to do it. I didn't really take it too, too serious. I should have worked harder, but I was like, I just have a heart for women who uh, don't, can't conceive, have had miscarriages, or who have lost children. And she said, do it. I said, I don't know, because I've never experienced that stuff. Who am I to get up there doing a, doing a, a, a seminar, doing a conference, doing a meet and greet, a prayer night <clears throat> for women um, and men who have had experienced loss concerning births and, and children and babies? I kid you not. I kid you not. I was going to put on the van. I said, who am I? Be careful. Now, I'm not saying I lost the babies because I didn't do the event. I'm just saying, you know, I, I don't know how that plays in. I just don't believe in coincidences. And whether the Lord heard my heart and said, oh, she thinks she's not qualified. Be very careful disqualifying yourself. That's a whole. That's a whole. If I had time, if I had time, I will flow on y'all right now. Be very careful disqualifying yourself. There are some y'all who want to be married and you disqualify yourself. Like, well, I, I like this type of guy because those type of guys, like, I don't even know. And you disqualify yourself because you think you're not good enough. Somewhere in there, there's a voice telling you, you ain't never been good enough. You'll never be this. And you disqualify yourself. There are some of y'all who um, feel like you can't walk into a certain blessing or lifestyle. Oh, you're welcome, cousin, because you've disqualified yourself. So some of y'all are experiencing sanctification because God is qualifying you. Okay, you don't you don't want to move forward with that business? You don't want to write that book? Who am I? Who, I don't have a college degree. Baby, I got two. I got a whole master's degree, okay, and I'm a YouTuber, okay? A whole life coach child from the house. Uh, who am I? I don't have any children. Who am I to give advice on, 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 on kids and, and, and raising kids? 
but you work out of school, but you work, but you got this connection with children. You just understand them on another level. Who am I? Who am I to start a, a, a cooking channel? Man, I ain't no chef. Man, I got a whole full time job. Who am I to tell women that they're not beautiful and start a, 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 a meeting at Starbucks for women who think that they're ugly? And I know good and well I'm, I'm uglier than who, who shot John. You know what I'm saying? We disqualify ourselves. I believe uh, the God I serve. Listen, if I'm, a, I believe we're all shades of God, like a different color. And my color is a very attractive color. I walk into a room before I say anything. People look at, and then when I open my mouth, that's it. I got the room, baby. I can command a room. So I believe God is something like me, and I believe God, huh, is doing this, huh? Not qualified, eh? Say no more, fam. So be encouraged. Um, don't disqualify who He has called. That goes for you and other people. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. I always find it fascinating people who don't like me. I'm like, really? Me? I always find, not even in a, in, a, in a space where like I hate them. I just always feel like, what? You don't like me? Like everybody like me. Not in a conceited way, but because like, I, I'm, not, I'm not problematic. I don't talk reckless about people. Like my heart is genuine, genuinely for people and I have a comedic edge. I'm funny and I can tell a story, sus queen, and I read books so my vocabulary is out there. So anyway, um, be careful putting your mouth on people. People be putting their mouth on me and this stuff be happening and they be like, I just want you to know like I ain't really like you, but then like you, you bless my life with. Like I didn't even know like really you like me? Let me read this. I do it all the time without even thinking twice about it. You got to break that because you also teaching it to your children. They're learning to disqualify themselves as well because they see themselves in a re their reflection. They see us. You know what I'm saying? I follow you for two years since I have VSG and love your personality and the connection you have with your family. Thank you. I respect you. I watch a few YouTubers just because, but you have purpose. Thank you, girl. And I be, and start telling people that. I always tell people, thank you for be, for the kind words because that's a water drop on my soul and, and this plot of land that God is plowing and tending and sowing things in. So thank you for that. I love you too. Oh, I love you too. Making me really reflect on this past year and what I thought of myself versus now. Yeah, girl. Let me tell you something, Joe. You, a, you, 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 the devil lucky you moved because you a cold sister. You a cold sister. Your family reflects this, uh... Come on, Holy Spirit, give me the word. Mm. Come on, come on, come on. Your family respect re reflects a purity. When I say purity, I don't mean without fault. I mean a genuine, a genuineness, a transparency, a safe environment. I believe, and this is prophetic, that you're raising some kids who are going to do some really big things. Like, I feel it as I'm talking to you. You ain't even here. And um, the things you and your husband may have dealt with as children um, got allowed to happen, sanctification, because who your children are, they wouldn't have been able to to thrive and bring to fruition their purpose that God has for them had they tried to do it through that environment. So God let it happen to you and Patrick so that as y'all came together in a union, you would now, oh, come on, Holy Spirit, could create an environment for those children to thrive. Because when I look at you, 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 you're not this, you know, you're not doing things out of, the, out of the ordinary. I think it's the love and the commitment and the tenacity you guys have with raising your kids. So God God bless you. And girl, you a cold piece. You a cold piece, Joanne. Wow, people just hating. Girl, yeah, people's crazy. I got to watch you, watch you mouth message. Watch your mouth message. I was just watching last night. Don't send me that. <laughs> I'm just playing. If the Lord put on your heart, send it to me. A whole word. Thank you for being exactly who you are today. Hey, man, thank y'all. So uh, it, it, it seemed like this word was on time. I ain't been live in a long time, but I'm going to put this up. I pray God uh, blesses people through it. Hey, I want to say I uh, appreciate you, love you. Uh, like I said, me and Lance got an announcement. We're trying to get some things together as we shift um, the business to more online. We're going to have more time and open up our home and our family. We need to talk more later. We sure do, Joanne. Girl, DM me your phone number or FaceTime or however you want to talk. I don't know what to, I don't know what i do if my only access to you was YouTube. Cat, you are my place of breath. Ah! And rejuvenation, I thank God for you. <laughs> Thank you, man. Hey, let me just tell y'all something. Um, first of all, I don't have a good memory, but I, I remember feelings and places. And so as I, I believe there is a worldwide stage waiting for me. But I also believe there is sanctification that has to happen because God doesn't want nothing to knock my block off when I get up there. Right. For those of you who have watched me and DM me and stayed in contact with me, continue to do so because there will always be space for you at my table. And I'll tell you why. Um, there's a lot of people who are going to think they're thirsty for me. They're going to misread that and be thirsty for my light because I'm too potent. I live in the deep. Some people swim out there and come and get stuff. All this is deep. I live there. 
And as a consequence, there's a lot of things that I, I that have happened to me. I mean, I've been to the hospital more times than anybody. I'm talking about from a little girl, little girl, teeth knocked out, molested, uh, hit in the mouth by a crackhead on the way home from school. Like crazy. Like I have, he has tried to take me out with his best. Okay, one, two punch. And I believe, you know, God allowed it because I am potent. I'm heavy. I'm heavy. I mean, I'm so I, I'm heavy to the point where now I ask people, "Do you want me to encourage you, or you want the real?" Because younger, I'm gonna just shoot you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you out. Now I'm like, um, God, I realize not everybody's in a position to process what it is they keep begging you for. If you ever come in contact with me off a of random, I, I'm I'm here to to give you an answer for something. I know I am. I know my vessel. I know my mouthpiece for God because I go through too much to maintain. Um, my position. So I say that to you to say, I, I appreciate y'all opening your business to me and allow me to use your gift and also understand there will always be a place for you guys in my heart, in my life. Um, it may not be in my 2021 Cadillac, but there'll be a place for you. <laughs> Baby, okay, mother get in the house. I don't know how. I'm going to get me a tummy tuck and a house and a Cadillac. I'm going to still do the work of the Lord, but I'm going to do it right and clean, baby, because this traverse breaking down, okay? So anyway, chills girl i thought that said chilies i just say well girl go get you something to eat then you're the truth no matter how frequently you do this it's always impactful thank you bro table i'm moving in the house come on both i need it come on i'm gonna have a big house anyway let me go get my kids so i love you guys i hope this hey share this tell people about me and go follow this chick just post on your story this this girl fire potent and um just know that i really this is for you like if you like everything about me it's potent for you that's that's the reflection of God's love. And before you get off, some of you need to just sit in that. Some of you just need to sit in like, wow, God created this crazy, amazing, funny girl, gave her the gifts because he knew at some point our paths would cross, even if they didn't physically cross. I would come across her and need to hear from God. And because of my life or my lack of faith, or maybe just because God chose to do it this way, um, I have connection with her and he's talking to me through right now. So that thing you're feeling right now as you're watching me literally is the Holy Spirit and you've... Let me say this and I'll get off. There is a frequency that we are allowed to tap into when we're trying to reach God. Okay? Now, no, he didn't show up in the car and flash his face on the screen. But he did allow us to tap into a frequency that sometimes we can't live in, but we can have frequent access to it. So, understand what I'm doing with you, you can absolutely do with God on your own time. It is not exclusive to me. Okay? So, because uh, clearly, tomorrow ain't promise. So I won't get into that. Um, but I just want you to know that you have access as well, baby. Okay? I love you guys. I would say catbranford.com. Chat with my whole website shut down, baby. I... I when I say I quit life, I ain't got no website no more. My YouTube family ain't seen me in months. I'm getting back, though. I'm back. I'm back. Love you guys. I'm going to get my baby. I love you, fam. Bye.